Welcome and thank you for joining us on the Mount Sinai Missionary Baptist Church of Memphis Incorporated YouTube channel. Let us pray. Our Heavenly Father, history has reminded us that you can take the worst that our lives can be and work it out for our good. Help us to trust you no matter what. In Jesus' wonderful name we pray. Amen. And our text for today is found in the book of Ruth chapter 1 verse 16 through 17 that's Ruth chapter 1 verse 16 through 18 and I'm reading the English Standard Version verse 16 reads but Ruth said do not urge me to leave you or to return from following you for where you go I will go and where you lodge I will lodge your people shall be my people and your God, my God. Where you die, I will die, and there will I be buried. May the Lord do so to me, and more also, if anything but death parts me from you. And when Naomi saw that she was determined to go with her, she said no more. The title of this week's sermon on uh, this uh, Mother's Day occasion is the influence of a mother-in-law. The influence of a mother-in-law. Last week, I mentioned that the uh, for Mother's Day is a celebration. It honors the mothers of the family, as well as it celebrates motherhood and maternal bonds. And the influence it also celebrates the influence of mothers in society. We said that influence is the capacity to uh, have an effect on the character, development, or behavior of someone. There are some synonyms that go along with influence and uh, several of them are uh, effect, the effect, the positive effect. And some people can have a negative effect on other people. But we want to focus on, always focus on, the positive effect that one can have on another person, especially mothers are on daughter-in-laws and whatnot, mother-in-laws on, on daughter-in-laws and mothers on daughters and fathers on sons and uh, big brothers on little brothers and so forth. Uh, also, another synonym is impact, the impact that you can have on another person's life. How can you uh, impact their lives so that their lives will change for the better. You give them that extra oomph at the right moment in their lives that will propel them to do better, to go farther, to seek to do uh, uh, more of God's will, for instance. And, 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 and then another one is sway. Uh, influence is swaying people. You know how you can you can kind of urge or move people to where you want them to be, moving people in the right direction. You can see a person going in the wrong direction and you can sway them away from the wrong, wrong direction to the right direction. Uh, that's influence. So what does real influence look like? And we're going to discover that uh, as we look at the influence of a mother-in-law. Uh, I want to say, I won't say much about uh, 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 Ruth's sister, Ophrah, uh, except that she was given the same opportunity as Ruth to stick with Naomi. Ophrah decided to return to her former family, uh, her former home, her former gods, little gods. And, but Ruth showed faith in Naomi, Naomi uh, and also in Naomi's God by choosing to follow Naomi uh, and return to Bethlehem, Judah, instead of staying in Moab. There comes a time of no return in each of our lives where we must make a decision. Ruth was at the point of no return. 
Ophrah was at the point of no return. You either go forward or you go back. And uh, Ophrah decided to go back and Ruth decided to go forward with Naomi. Uh, we have to decide if we're going to uh, go uh, forward or to something better than we have left from. Uh, seven of the disciples of Jesus decided to return to their former life of fishing in the lakes and rivers instead of continuing to go forward by faith. And thank God that, like many of us, uh, they were influenced in the right, the way, right way. Uh, and, and they saw Jesus, that he was still alive. They were going back because they assumed that he was dead. After all that he had said to them, they assumed that he was dead. A lot of times in life, we have to admit that we feel like Jesus is no longer with us. And, and that's uh, part of Satan's job to get us to feel like uh, or think that Jesus is no longer with us, that we don't deserve him to be, that he won't put up and, 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 and uh, hang around us. Um, so... Even when we can't see Jesus, when we can't see a better life ahead, faith must kick in and propel us to go forward. Sometimes we have to decide whether or not uh, where or what we are going to is worth even dying for possibly. It has been said that if it's worth having, it's worth dying for. Too often, we choose to fall for anything rather than die for something worthwhile. Let's look at uh, three or four points of interest from this story, uh, from these three verses. The first point of interest we want to look at is every person is tested. Every person is tested. So it's important on how you handle the test because all of us are tested. Sooner or later, we will all be tested. Tests will either drive you from trusting in Jesus or draw us to trusting him even more. The test will vary in uh, severity and toughness with the case. In every case, they uh, will be conclusive and determining the genuineness of the life professed. Test will, will show us uh, whether we are professing uh, what we are going to do. A lot of times we talk a good game, but we're not really into it. We don't really follow through. Uh, kind of like Peter when he said, Jesus, I will die with you. And, and, and possibly he meant that as far as he could go. But then uh, he didn't realize how far following Jesus would go and what it would take to follow Jesus. One of the main things that it takes in following Jesus and the test that we must pass is that we are going to have to leave some people behind. We can't, there are some folks that we can't hang out with because they're not going where we're trying to go. They cannot be, uh, these tests cannot be evaded or avoided. If one is for Christ, he will continue with Christ, just as uh, Ruth continued with her mother-in-law, Naomi. The test of God cannot be too severe. God does not put more on us than we can handle. You look at the story of Job and it, it looks like, God put more on him than he, than he could handle. But God, when he bragged on Job, he knew what Job could handle. And he would not uh, exceed what Job could handle. 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 13 says, uh, and this is the message version. I love this, uh, how, how it puts it. It says, no test or temptation. Tests come from God mainly. And temptation comes from Satan. Uh, no test or temptation that comes your way 
is beyond the course of what others have had to face. In other words, don't think that you're going through something that nobody else has gone through. Jesus, for instance, was tempted in all of the ways that we are yet without sin. And then the verse goes on to say, all you need to remember is that God will never let you down. He'll never let you be pushed past your limit. He will always be there to help you come through it. Uh, the true follower cannot be driven away. To the strongest appeal, the true follower will reply, Lord, to whom shall I go? You're the only one that has the bread of life or eternal life. And then the second uh, point of interest that we want to look at is when tested, there are some Ophras who will go back. When tested, an Ophra will go back. Why should she leave so much for such a little? Naomi was, the, was only her mother-in-law. And there was her own mother standing and beckoning her in the doorway of her own home, her old home in her mindset. A lot of times we are called by what we left. We're called to go back. Just like uh, Israel, when God had delivered them out of the bondage in Egypt, they got out and started looking back. Just like uh, Miss Lot. God had gotten them out of Sodom and Gomorrah, and she started looking back. It's dangerous to look back, because if you look back, you'll want to go back. Uh, Ophir uh, was not only leaving home and country, but she was leaving her little gods, G-O-D-S, uh, with much depth of feeling there was not, not, was not a, uh, depth enough to find uh, her heart to go forward. Naomi's influence was as strong in her life as it was in Ruth. And there are some folks, no matter how you try to influence them in the right direction, they're going to uh, choose to do otherwise. The third uh, point of interest is a Ruth, when tested, goes on. A Ruth, when tested, goes on. What's the difference between Ruth and Oprah leading to this different conduct? First thing is her devotion to Naomi. She was less impulsive than her sister, but her hers was a love which could be tested. And we all better make sure that we got a love for God, a love for Jesus Christ, a love for mankind that can stand to be tested. God's test for us was when he had to get, make the choice of giving his son to die for sinners. And Jesus' test was when he gave his life that we might have life. So uh, our test, our, our love, uh, just like Ruth's love for Naomi uh, had to be tested. And it shows the genuineness of our love, the sincerity of our love. The Greek and Latins uh, among their fine discriminations distinguish between the emotional love of feeling and the intelligent love of choice. Making choices has to be an, made with an intelligent love. Emotional love just depends on feeling, how I feel at the moment. Ophra's love was the emotional love, while that of Ruth was the intelligent love of choice. It grew out of careful reflection. She had observed her mother-in-law carefully. Ruth's love was a deep and 
undying attachment to uh, Naomi. And then uh, this influence that uh, Naomi had on Ruth was brought about by the religious foundation of her conduct. The religious foundation of her conduct. And if your foundation is not built on Christ and righteousness, you'll fail the test. This is a trait, if not wholly wanting in her sister, was too weak for anyone to mention. A trait beside which Ruth's exceeding love is wholly secondary. Anything but a love that can stand to be tested, a love that's built on a religious foundation uh, is secondary and will not be uh, able to stand the test. Ruth had chosen her mother's good, God, rather. Ruth had chosen her mother's God. So her, her, her foundation was, she had a solid religious foundation uh, that connected her to Ruth, all right. Her resoluteness exercises her will. She was moved by Naomi's appeal. She thought about what she was leaving. She heard tender voices calling her of the living, of the dead. Come back, come back. Her heart almost began to yield. When Ophrah returned, she could barely resist the impulse to go on. You know, you know how it is when you see somebody else make a decision to do something and you've got to make a different decision. It's difficult and, and it adds to the difficultiness of that decision when you, you see somebody else make another decision. Uh, uh, one of Jesus' disciples said, I go fishing. And then a bunch of the other ones said, oh, we're going with you. Too often we chose choose to go with the crowd instead of sticking it out and going in the right direction. When Ophir returned, she could barely resist the, uh, Ruth could barely uh, resist the impulse to go with her. Then, she strengthened herself. She summoned her soul. She put forth a supreme exercise of will. And that's why she was able to say, where you go, I will go. Where you lodge, I will lodge. Your people shall be my people. Your God will be my God. And where you die, I will die and there I will be buried. And may God do so to me and much more if anything but death separates us. The last point of interest, and then I'm finished, is Ruth received her reward. When you make the right decision, when you make a decision to follow Jesus no matter what or how it looks, you will be rewarded. She became an ancestor of the world's redeemer. There was a kinsman's redeemer ahead in her life. Matter of fact, there was two. There was Boaz and then there was Jesus. She had evidence uh, uh, of the hope for uh, that was ahead. She couldn't see it. She hadn't made it to it. But there was evidence. You know how, how what faith is, the evidence of things hoped for and the, the, uh, the, the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. She had evidence hope for in what she was ahead and she could see through the eyes of Naomi the substance of things that she was hoping for. Uh, Jasper William, Pastor Jas Jasper William Sr., uh, of Atlanta, I believe that's where he lived, uh, did a sermon years ago back in the early 80s uh, or late 70s. It was, it was titled, uh, Serving the Lord Will Pay Off After a While. 
I used to love that sermon. Serving the Lord will pay off after a while. And I want to testify today. I want to go on record by saying serving the Lord will pay off after a while. And after a while don't have to come in the hereafter. I'm a living witness that serving the Lord will pay off by and by. As you go from day to day, serving the Lord will pay off. And in eternity, that's the big payback or the big payday. Day. Uh, you can't beat God giving no matter how hard you try. Just as sure, this is a song that I love, just as sure as you are living, and the Lord is in heaven on high. The more you give, the more he will give to you. But keep on giving because it's really true that you can't beat God giving. No matter how hard you try, should we receive and never give? The Savior died that we might live. His life on Calvary, he gladly gave our sinful souls to save. He gives me health from day to day. He keeps me strong. He guides me when I would go wrong. He gives me everything that I need and may my every hunger he feeds. He gave me peace. He, he made me whole. And when in sin, he saved my soul. And what I gave would never be compared with the blessings that I share to have a kinsman redeemer in Jesus Christ who gave his life for me on an old rugged cross on a hill called Calvary. They took him down and they buried him in a borrowed tomb. But early the third day, early in the morning, he rose uh, to life again with all power in heaven and in earth in his hand. Power to influence even sinners like me. Thank you, Jesus. Let us pray. Our Heavenly Father, thank you for providing the kinsman redeemer in your son, Jesus Christ. Help us to see you working for our good in all situations. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. That's it for Mother's Day. And uh, thank you for once again for joining us on the Mount Sinai Missionary Baptist Church uh, of Memphis Incorporated YouTube channel. I pray that you will be blessed. Remember to mask up. Remember to practice social distancing until we get the best of this uh, coronavirus. Uh, and wash your hands often. These things should be coming more and more of a habit to us by now. So with that, I'm out of here once again. Take care. Love you. Bye-bye.